So let's talk about Megan the woman. Now, Megan, for me, you are a true expression of femininity and strength, and I love that combination. Ah, well, I think femininity and masculinity are both important aspects of yeah. everybody, yes. men and women, yes. and we should be allowed to experience both, and it's about balancing them. Yeah, it is. And it, we're in our 50s. Yes, we sure are. So, so how, is, how do you feel about aging? Because we are aging. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And I actually, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it because I feel so much more peaceful. Yeah. I mean, I have to be honest, sometimes I, you know, look and I think, oh, you're getting older and the wrinkles and, and I can't, but then I think, you know, this is the best time of my life. The yeah. best. Yeah. What do you think about the, I, I call it the fear that the media and people put into women about fear of ageing, so this word anti-ageing. Yeah. What, what, what are your thoughts on it? <sighs> well, it's wrong. Um, ageing is a natural process and traditionally ageing and the older people in society we are venerated for wisdom, for experience. And I think something's gone slightly wrong, especially in the Western society, where everyone's chasing only that youthful thing. Um, a big part of our important foundation, which is that aged wisdom, is not given necessarily, especially for women. It's sadly to say, you know, it's okay to be an older man and in your stature, but an older woman becomes invisible and her voice, sadly, isn't always heard. Well, I don't believe that. I, Good. You know, oh, <laughs> no, you oh, don't. <laughs> oh, I, it just, when, when I first started hearing that about, oh, you know, once you're over, you know, 50, you become invisible. And I was like, how dare us? Woman, we, can, we will not believe that. No. Well, we won't, but unfortunately... And look, everyone has a right to make their decisions, but we're chasing youth. And you can see it in the so many procedures that are around looking younger, but we'll never be that person again. We are who we are here and now. Yeah, absolutely. And tell me, you know, we all have to go through menopause. Yes. Um, it, it, do you have any advice in sharing? Because... Um. It's a big part of, you know. It is, and it's something that we often don't talk about. And it's actually a really tough journey for a lot of us. And, you know, I had the hot sweats. I've just come through it, I think. And that was like, whew, this is... Um, I had to change some of my lifestyle practices. And, you know, I... Find, you know, I actually found the most useful tool for menopause was meditation. Because there's something about the heat and the stress of that or that change you feel like almost like a furnace has come that meditation actually calms down that whole process i mean there's foods and there's herbs but that was the key for me yeah i wanted to know what your secret was because i i've known you for quite a long time now and and got to know you quite well in the last couple of years and we're going to get to that reason why <laughs> shortly but you were always so calm you and I know that your life is full. You have a full life, work, business, family. You're always like this, zen and calm. I want to know. So you mentioned meditation. Yes. Um, what do you do? I'm not always like that for a start. <laughs> Believe you me, Richard would tell you I'm not always like that. <laughs> but... I am generally calm nature and I meditation is integral to that and it's just creating a little zone preferably every day where you just sit and you don't do yeah or if you're not a good sitter you go dancing now you love dancing don't you do you lose your mind? Oh, when I you do you stop, stop thinking. thinking? Oh, about as things? soon as I do the embrace, the music starting, I'm just I'm meditating. I know I'm meditating, uh, and I agree. You you can have it's that sense of stillness. Yes, and the mind. It's the, just the, the mind it calms. Just calms. Yeah, yeah. And I would say to everyone, if there's 
any advice. It's just like 10 minutes a day. That's how I started. I did 10 minutes a day with a guided meditation because I couldn't stop the mind. And then after a year, it deepened. And that is the transforming fire because you can be witness to anything that's happening and feel a little bit removed that you can come back to that safe space. I'm a huge believer in um, the power of the mind and thoughts and your grandmother said a really interesting thing. And it was, she said, um, it's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. It's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. Mm. Yeah, she was a wise woman. She was a wise woman. Yeah. I mean, what did you take that as? Oh, wow, you know, that was a mantra I think I probably lived my life with. And, and she did believe in good diet, but she was always about uh, having the right philosophy to be able to be present in any situation um, and be quiet in it. Because the thing that eats you is the mental merry-go-round, the thought pattern, like a record that goes round and round and makes us feel stressed. And stress is the biggest killer and the most uncomfortable thing to have in our life. Unless we're running from the tiger. (laughs) Then we need it. (laughs) I absolutely agree with you. Stress is a really not a nice thing and we really need to make sure we manage our stress. Just being aware of it, yeah. And meditation, I just, oh, I'm a big believer in doing the, the meditation. And, you know, for someone that's never done meditation, when I first started doing um, meditation, I went to um, a Buddhist temple and I did a, a six-week meditation course. And the very first lesson, what they did is that they made us hold a candle like this and for five minutes you just looked at the flame. And I'll tell you, it's the most beautiful thing to look at. Yeah. Sort of like, wow, it is, and it just, yeah. And what that does is that you're thinking and you're focusing here and all the chattiness in your mind leaves. So um, I do really encourage, I'm going to probably do something on meditation at some stage because I, I believe in it. So I think everybody needs it. I want to finish with a beautiful story of really why Megan and I our, how our paths cross, and it, it was in 2015, yes. and I was at a meeting with Megan, and I was sharing with her about my daughter Jasmine, who was living in Melbourne. She um, had a dance scholarship with um, Dance World, which is a performing arts school, and she had terrible blisters. And I was talking to Megan, and I was saying, "Oh, my daughter's got terrible infected blisters, and she's a dancer." And Megan said, oh, where is this? And I said, oh, Dance World in Melbourne. And Megan just, her face just went, (laughs) oh, my gosh. She goes, I, Megan said, I've just returned from Melbourne with my daughter, Ruby, who is going to be going and doing to the same school in Melbourne to do a uh, uh, musical musical theatre because Ruby's an amazing singer. And at that stage, Jasmine had been living with a family and she was just about to go flatting. It was going to be her first experience of flatting. And Ruby was going to be going to Melbourne. So we got the girls together. We didn't know how they would be. And the most beautiful thing has happened. Because, you know, five years later, our girls did flat together. And they are best, best friends. They are such best friends they're going to be traveling together this year and it's incredible this is the synchronicity of life and we had the we had the security of knowing each other while our young daughters were flatting together overseas and and, and learning some big lessons yes and we could ring each other and say (laughs) (laughs) and yeah It it was beautiful, but, you know, again, um, family is very important to us. And I want to finish with, we have both allowed our daughters to follow their hearts and their passions. We have. We really have. They stepped out, and this is what they said is our passion. We need to do this. And we sent them off. We did. And I think that's really important. I think it is, and it's sometimes brave as a parent to be able to do that and trust the universe. Mm. But 
it is a blessing and I think that's why you have such a great relationship with your daughter now and I do with mine is that they are probably quite thankful. Yeah. So it's hard though to do it but trust is key. It is. Megan, I just want to say thank you. I, I know that we have all got so much from hearing your story. I hope just I hope I've been at least a little bit helpful. It's been an incredible blessing for me for you to even think that I, you know, have something to share. I'm really honoured and um, thank you, Lorraine, for what you're doing with the gift. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And remember, if you did enjoy listening to Megan's story and you got something from it, please share it. That would mean the world to me. Namaste.